Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go into how to graph angles in radians and in degrees. You are probably aware of degrees. Degrees is a unit of measure that's based on a straight angle, straight angle being essentially a straight line, so 180 would be the basis for it. Well, a radian is based on the radius of a circle and its arc length. It's defined as such. If you take this distance here, the radius, this distance here also the radius, and then this distance here along the curve of the sector that's also got the same length, then the resulting angle is considered one radian. We estimate that it's about 57 degrees because if you were to take an equilateral triangle where e every angle is 60 degrees, you can see that since it's equilateral, all the sides are the same, that's R, that's R, that's R. But for a circle, this third side here is curved. And because it's curved, it falls slightly short of the 60 degree mark. However, to give a, a better idea of exactly how much a radian is, let's take another radian and tack that on, and then another radian and tack that on. You'll notice how we've got almost a straight line here. In fact, we have three radians so far, but if we tack on a little bit more, only then will we be able to get a straight line. And hopefully you see just how many radians it takes to make 180 degrees. Pi. Therefore, we use this conversion. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. I want you to know that for degrees, we use a, this little symbol here to denote the units, but there is no units here for radians. So 3.14, we just simply leave it like that. We don't use like centimeters or meters or some other unit or whatever. It's implied that you're using radians. Therefore, if you want to convert between them, what we would do is we would multiply either by pi over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi. Remember, these two are equal to each other, so when you multiply by this conversion, you're essentially multiplying by one. For example, let's say you want to convert 45 degrees to radians. What you want to do is this, since you're converting to radians, you need this degree symbol to cancel. So when you're trying to determine which one do you multiply by, the first or the second, you multiply by the one that will allow you to cancel out the degree symbol. In other words, this one, because this way, when you times them out, you'll see that this and this reduce out, one on top, one on the bottom. We couldn't do that the other way around. Here you would have degree on top and degree on top. So when you multiply them, you get degrees times degrees, which is degrees squared. That doesn't help us. So again, we use this one. The degree symbols cancel. If you can reduce the 45 and the 180, uh, you would most certainly want to do that. So that reduces to 1 and 4. If you're using a calculator to do this, by the way, use the fraction button in your calculator. Actually type in 45 fraction 180, and it'll give you 1 fourth. Then what you do is you just stick pi at the end. So your answer is 1 fourth pi, or pi over 4. All right, let's try another. This time let's go the other way and convert this to degrees, 2 thirds pi. Again, we need to determine which of these two fractions to multiply by. Since we're converting to degrees, we don't have to worry about canceling them out, which means you want degrees on top. So you'll be choosing this second fraction. So what happens now? Same thing. You just go ahead and just start reducing. Pi's reduce out. 3 and 180 reduce out to give you 60. And then, of course, don't forget your, your units there. The degree symbol's still there, so we know that we're on the right track. Just go ahead and multiply whatever's left, and that's your answer. One thing I want to highlight is that, yes, the pi's did reduce out. A lot of times, a student will choose a fraction depending upon whether or not they want to reduce out pi, and that's really not the best way to go. You want to instead focus on the degree symbol. Let me give you an alternate example. Let's convert this to degrees. 4. Now, offhand, a lot of times people will look at this and go, isn't it already in degrees? It's four degrees. No, 
it's not 4 degrees. And how do you know? There's no degree symbol right here. See like right here, here, those are degree symbols. We don't see that on this. So that's how you know we're in radians. So if we're going to convert this to degrees, again, we need the degree symbol on top. So you're going to be using this fraction. So in this case, there's nothing to reduce out. So what you would do then is you would simply leave it like this, or actually you would multiply. So you would get 4 times 180 degrees. That's 720. So that would be 720 over pi, and then it's degrees. Now that would be an exact answer. If you're going to tap this into your calculator, you would go 720 divided by 3.14. Or if you have a pi button on your calculator, just use that. And then what you get is this, which is going to be a decimal. So just simply round off. Most instructors are fine with rounding to the nearest degree. So 229 works for us. Okay, let's move on to something slightly different. Arc length. If you're going to be computing the arc length, you must note that we use s to represent the length of the piece of a circle. The whole circle would be considered the circumference. The angle is in the center for a sector, and then of course the radius. These three values you're going to need. The formula for the arc length is just simply the radius times the central angle, namely this. Now this works as long as we're in radians. If we're not in radians, we've got to use a different formula. Typically the circumference is 2r times pi. And then if you're going to find the arc length, you would simply take a fraction of 2r pi. And that fraction would be based on the central angle, over 360 degrees. Now this is if you're using degrees. But if you're using radians, remember we have a different formula. So what happens is this. If you take this formula and you convert it, you would simply convert the degrees to radians by writing in 2 pi. Remember that a pi is 180, so 360 is just twice that amount. Then what you do is just simply reduce out, and you've got your version for the radians up here. Because of that, you can see that there's a real preference here for radians because a lot of formulas, like the arc length, it's a lot easier to compute. Here's an example. The sector of a circle has an arc length of 8 pi. If the radius is 16 units, then what is the central angle? We'll start off by writing your formula first, then plug in your values. You know the arc length already, it's 8 pi. You also know the radius, it's 16. Just go ahead and solve for theta by dividing both sides by 16 and reducing, and we get pi over 2. So that's your answer for the angle. Pi over 2, by the way, is approximately 90 degrees. Remember that pi is 180. Okay, let's do another. Let's say the central angle of a sector is 45 degrees and the radius is 10 inches. What is the arc length? Again, there's your formula. But keep in mind, this only works for radians. Our angle is in degrees. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take 45 degrees and rewrite it in terms of radians. Recall that we've already done that before. It's pi over 4. So that's going to go right here for the angle. Again, you would not put 45 degrees here. You would put pi over 4. 10 is the radius. And then from here, we just simply reduce out the fraction. 10 and 4 reduce to 5 and 2. So what you get is 5 halves pi. Now, if you're asked to round that off to the nearest decimal, then you would tap it into your calculator, 5 halves times 3.14. So either one works. Okay, now let's talk about standard position and mapping out angles. You'll notice here what I have is a circle, and what I have here is something on the right-hand side. Whenever you graph an angle starting from over here, you are graphing from standard position. All you have to understand is that we go around in a circle, so this is your initial ray, and then wherever it finishes up, that's going to be where it terminates. Now, the direction you go depends on whether or not you're asked to graph a positive or a negative angle. Positive angles go counterclockwise. In other words, like this. Negative angles, on the other hand, go in the other direction. And that's all positive and negative means. 
all it means is direction. As long as you start from over here on the right hand side, you are starting from standard position, so that's considered zero. So if you're going up here, that would be positive 90. If you're going down here, that would be negative 90. Let's say, for example, we were going to graph negative 120 degrees from standard position. Well, recall that negative goes this way. Now, down to here is negative 90 degrees. So it's a good idea to kind of get an idea of how far it is to each axis. If we keep going, that would be negative 180, so that's too far. Therefore, we know that it's somewhere in the middle, and we'll just kind of guesstimate it. So that's really it. How about we try another? How about we try 390 degrees from standard position? A reminder of how we rotate about this. Let's say we were going in the positive direction. This would be 90, that's 180, that's 270, and that's 360. And you'll notice, by the way, I'm also including radians. 390 goes beyond 360, so if we went around in a complete circle, we still wouldn't get there. So then what you do is you just keep going. I mean, if you went another 90 degrees, this would be 450, so that's too far. So that puts us about right here. If you show a circle like this, that's how you will have shown that you've gone around 390 degrees. So that's it. How about we do one more? Let's go 5 fourths pi. Now, if you're doing this in radians, here's how you would think of it. This is a 180 degree angle, which remember we said is equal to pi radians. So think about what that means. If this is one entire pi, the four here is telling you that we can cut it into four pieces. So that's one fourth pi, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths would be just one more piece. So this should tell you what quadrant we are in when we graph this thing. So therefore, all the way over to here, that would be 5 fourths pi. However, what if you were doing this in degrees, because you're still not used to thinking in terms of radians? Then you would take your 5 fourths and you would convert it to degrees. You convert it to degrees in one of two ways. Multiplying by 180 degrees over pi, your pi's would reduce out and you would do a little bit of arithmetic and get 225 degrees. There's also a second way, and I neglected to mention this before. Since 180 degrees is equal to pi, what you can do is you can just simply take the pi here and then write in 180 degrees instead. So what you have essentially is this. It ends up being the same math. I mean, you would reduce 4 and 180, you get 45, and then you go 5 times 45. Either way gives you 225. And then to show that you drew, drew out the angle, you would do this, and then just write in 5 fourths pi, or 225. That's really it. Okay, we're going to finish up here with coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are just simply this. These are angles that terminate in the same place. For example, 30 and negative 330 are coterminal angles. The reason why is because 30 degrees takes us out here, but negative 330 takes us in the other direction, and yet we finish in the same spot. Those are coterminal angles, meaning that they share the same terminal ray. For example, let's say we wanted to determine a coterminal angle for 420. I'm emphasizing a coterminal angle to state that there are lots. In fact, there are infinitely many. 420, if you were to graph that, would take you over here to the first quadrant. Again, that's after you cycle around. So all you need was another angle that would terminate here. Now, if you figured out the difference between 420 here and then this last mark here that we passed, which was 360, that would be 60 degrees. That is one possible answer. You could also go in the other direction. 
or you could go past this mark and then go around again. Because of that you have infinitely many answers. One big thing that you should note though is that coterminal angles they differ by 360 degrees. Like 420 was our original 60 is an answer. If you subtract the two you get 360. Now if you went around again it would be a multiple of 360, which means that you don't need to draw a picture to get a coterminal angle. All you would have to do is add or subtract 360. In this case I subtracted, so 60 would be an answer. If I added instead, then 780 would be an answer. You can add another 360 to this and get yet another answer. So again, there are infinitely many answers. All you got to do is add or subtract some multiple of 360 degrees. Okay, let's try one last example here. Let's find a coterminal angle to 5 sevenths pi. Now before you think, convert that to degrees, you're thinking pain. That's pain because first you must go through the whole issue of doing a conversion. And again, that could mean multiplying by 180 over pi, or just simply substituting 180 degrees into pi. You're still going to get a fraction or a decimal that doesn't, uh, that doesn't uh, terminate. And then you're going to have to take 360 and blah, blah, blah. So instead, what you do is you just stick to radians. What's the radian equivalent of 360 degrees? That would be 2 pi. So what you do is you add or you subtract 2 pi. And you can do this easily with a calculator, believe it or not, because your calculator most likely can handle fractions. Take 5 sevenths minus the 2. Don't worry about the pi's because they're like terms. If you're doing by hand, just get a common denominator. So this would be 14 over 7. And now that you have a common denominator, you go 5 minus 14, which is negative 9. That's really it. If instead you were adding 2 pi, you can say that, well, I got 2 and 5 sevenths. That works. Or just go 5 plus 14 is 19. By the way, you can also do multiples of 2 pi, like 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, etc., etc. Just remember that 2 pi is what you'd use for radians because a pi is 180 degrees. Therefore, 2 pi would be twice that, which is 360.